battle of midnight. For many, the single key defining moment in the Iconian War of 2410, and considered a great victory for both the Federation and the Alliance. The battle served as a testament to both Starfleet's resilience and the work put in by the diplomatic corp to forge the alliance between the various Alpha Quadrant powers. However, in the glow of perceived victory, it is all too easy for those of us who survived to forget that such an ostensibly positive outcome was not always guaranteed. For this Fleetcom retrospective, we are speaking to Captain Gabriel Carver of the Starship Venture, whose own experiences are typical of many commanders who fought in that fateful battle. I don't enjoy discussing the Iconian War. <sighs> Broadly speaking, I don't think a lot of us do. It was short, but the amount of catastrophic loss suffered during that period. It's enough to make you seriously reconsider your position as a Starfleet officer. Captain Carver is the son of Captain Jackson Carver, a survivor of Wolf 359, and former NCO Hannah Carver Stern. His mother was killed in action in the last days of the Dominion War, and his father was lost with his ship, the Resolution, in the 2380s. This has given the captain a unique perspective on conflict and the Starfleet's role in it. I grew up on stories of Wolf 359. My father was a brevet promotion. After the battle, he got bumped up to officer. It happened to a few different people. You don't hear too many stories of brevets becoming captains. My father was conscious that talking about his service was the only way he knew to discourage my interest in being in Starfleet. I guess he had the opposite effect for me. Most people have the image of Starfleet brats that are the children of officers. But to me, my father was a hero. Having now faced a similarly apocalyptic moment, I feel like I understand him a little better now. The Iconian War had been brewing for some time. Reports of Iconian interference in galactic events have been noted for the last four years and are believed in part to be responsible for the resurgence in Undine activity in the last decade, including the destruction of Enterprise G and the attack on Space Dock in mid-2409. I'm not going to sit here and say that we knew it was coming. I'm sure there were signs and portents, and I've heard all the conspiracy theories about us knowing something was afoot. I'm also sure that those signs and portents were acted upon. I'm not convinced there was any way that we could have been prepared for the Iconians. They were called demons of air and darkness in ancient mythology. And it was deserved. The Iconian War was one of the most brutal in living memory. On the very first day, a quarter of the combined Alliance fleet was destroyed, and key strategic targets were laid under siege by the Iconians. Counter-attacks by Allied forces were catastrophically ineffective, and as the war continued to drag on, conventional warfare against the Iconians increasingly proved to be a losing prospect. My first command was the Block 3 Excelsior 1 class Oberon. My ship. Old. Beige and grey carpets. Still with some of the old green Alcars panels. I got her the year before the Iconian War began. She was... no match for the Iconians. But we somehow mundled through for a while until the Battle of the Iconian Sphere. That was... Speak candidly, Captain. Fine. We assembled the biggest fleet in Starfleet history. Elements from most of the different fleets. First, third, fifth. Twelfth Fleet was on reserve support. Our job 
was to patch up holes in our lines. There was nothing but holes in our lines. From what I understand, we achieved a handful of our goals, but... Fruitless, did I call the victory of the Last Alliance? Not wholly so, yet it did not achieve its end. Sauron was diminished, but not destroyed. His ring was lost, but not unmade. The Dark Tower was broken, but its foundations were not removed. Captain? Sorry, Tolkien. I got to reading his work while I was laid up on a space dock between commands after the Oberon was lost. The Iconians were bloody, but the war was far from won, and the loss of so many ships only strengthened the feeling among certain quarters that, well, we were dead. It was after the Battle of the Iconian Sphere that Captain Carver was given command of the Starship Venture. The Venture was among the last of the Block One Odyssey commissions. The Odyssey class was, at the time, considered the most up-to-date, heavy capital ship design in Starfleet's roster, and the Venture was brand new out of the shipyards of New Humberside. My chief engineer tells me that Block One Odyssey is a work of engineering genius. I don't know about that, but I know the Venture is a beauty. Nothing else quite like it. <laughs> Captain's conceit. Actually, in some ways, the Venture is quite outdated by modern standards. It was the Iconian War that taught us the limitations of the Odi One types. Little stuff you'd be better talking to a shipwright about. Power transfer rates, armor density, that sort of thing. But at the time she was launched, she was among the best we had. And we'd need her. It would prove timely that Carver would receive his new command now. The first combat mission that the Venture would engage in would be the final battle of the Iconian War. The Battle of Midnight. <sighs> you understand there's not much I can say about the battle itself, even for a fleet combat. Not the wider battle, anyway. Classified details, that sort of thing. Honestly, I don't know if I know half the details myself. Scuttlebutt is faster than warp speed. We heard all the time about how the Iconians were about to attack so-and-so system, about how so-and-so ship was destroyed, then not. I heard of the Enterprise being blown up eight times. I'm sure Captain Sean would find that very funny. I didn't trust the rumours flying around. I still don't. All I know for certain is what went down, and our orders were simple. My task group and two others were brought in as third wave. If it hit the fan, in we'd go. I'd strategize with the other captains in my task group, trying to figure out what to do next, and we'd hit upon a few tactics. What's that old saying? No plan survives contact with the enemy? Yeah. That's true. Per Starfleet regulations, the exact details of the Battle of Midnight are classified to the highest level. Indeed, had the battle taken place anywhere other than Earth orbit, it is likely that the general public would not be aware of the events at all. Earth's been hit hard over the last 50 years. The Borg incursions, including Frontier Day. And there was the Breen attack, the Undine assault. There's a lot. This one, though. I remember standing on the bridge as we walked in. Must have been a good five seconds, but it felt like an eternity. I watched the battle out there unfolding and I thought, this is it. This is one of those moments where good people give their lives for the service. I wasn't afraid. I didn't want to die, don't get me wrong. But I wondered, was this it? 
another ship, another name on a list, and nothing else. My father died in the service. I don't know the details. I might never know. But I like to hope he achieved something. Maybe it's wrong to want to achieve something, but... If I have to die in this uniform, I want it to be meaningful. I remember I was thinking about what I should say. Address Intercraft. All hands, this is the captain. Mind your stations, keep your cool, trust the person next to you. We are going to protect Earth. That is the mission. Your Starfleet, get it done. The battle itself continued for several hours. Many starships, the Cleveland, the Elucidator, the Cairo, the Columbia, the Starfinder, were either damaged or destroyed. The battle ended, however, not with the annihilation of Earth that many feared, but with a truce with the remaining Iconians. In what seemed like a stroke of fortune, a miracle, the war was over. The exact details of how a truce was won in the midst of that battle are unclear, and Captain Carver did not have any insight that he could share. My chief engineer calls those a Starfleet issue miracle. I like to think of it in those terms. There's no other explanation anyone ever gave me anyway, so chalking it up to a miracle works about as well as anything else. After the battle, all that was left was to take stock. Many ships had been lost and others had been crippled. The venture was damaged during the battle, but unlike many ships that survived, most of the damage was relatively superficial. Well, you say superficial. Hull breaches, the port nacelle took a hammering. But we were in fixer-up state, not let's turn her into a whole new class of starship state. <laughs> I still hear from a couple of Oddy captains about how they miss the lines of the old Oddy class. But Starfleet had survived. Again. Beaten impossible odds. Again. Somehow. I don't know if I'm alone in thinking this, but not knowing, I don't mind it. I don't need to know how we were saved. This snapshot of the Battle of Midnight shows a variety of things. The dread hanging over the fleet, the resolve that captains had to do their best, and most of all, the courage of the brave crews who went into that battle with no hope of victory. No one could have expected the Starfleet issue miracle that ended the war. That it is precisely these sort of miracles that have saved the Federation should not take away from the courage those taking part in the battle showed. When I stop to think about how many ships didn't make it, I consider myself and my ship lucky. The Battle of Midnight wasn't our moment to die in the service of the Federation. It wasn't our Wolf 359. Maybe that day is still coming, but I'm not worried. Whatever comes next, we'll do our best. And who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll pull another Starfleet issue miracle out of our hats. This has been a Fleet Calm retrospective. As ever, our thanks go to the Admiralty, as well as to Captain Carver and to the Fleet Reenactment Society.